what it means, but I think of it as meaning stretch. So there are your stretch receptors. Now, when you have high blood pressure, um, they actually will fire off their action potentials more, which will include, which will um, increase your parasympathetic nervous activity. Um, but when your blood pressure decreases, uh, they stretch less, and this stretching less is then send signals to the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system there's a V in there the ANS yep. autonomic nervous system and it has effects on the sympathetic and the parasympathetic okay the parasympathetic being essentially disactivated it, it is reduced with and the sympathetic um, nervous system is quite strongly activated Sympathetic. Now, what this does is your it sends out your um, catecholamines that I talked about earlier. Um, so, classically, your adrenaline, which is the big one most people think of, your adrenaline, your noradrenaline, um, also, and um, some other things as well. So, what does this do? Um, it has effects. Uh, the, I could go into a lot more detail, but um, because I've talked a bit too much, I'm just going to do it very simply. Um, so it has these effects, and it, what it does is it increases your heart rate, and it increases your contractility. And it also increases your vessel constriction. Okay. So I've talked about these words a bit before. So if I go up a bit, sympathetic, remember it increases your heart rate, contractility, vessel constriction. If we go up to here and we look at the cardiac output in my messy, messy stuff over here, we got cardiac output, heart rate, time stroke volume. Heart rate is dependent by your increase in sympathetic nervous activity, um, which increases um, the rate at which your SA node um, fires and also the, the rate at which your AV node fires, but essentially it does stuff to increase your heart rate. Um, there's receptor names which I won't go into here, but will in another video. So it increases your heart rate, and if we look, heart rate governs by your, your heart rate governs your cardiac output with an increase leading to an increase. and what else? Stroke volume. Stroke volume is contractility. So if we go back down, where was I? Contractility. Sympathetic increases your contractility. Yep. And what else is it from? It is also, what else is stroke volume? Heart rate times stroke volume. Well, that's increased by your venous return. If, I, if you remember, I used VR here. Your venous return. Um, venous return. That's covered by your venous return. So the vasoconstriction will increase the blood pressure. So your blood volumes stay the same if you're staying up, decrease if you stood down. But so it's increase your venous tone, which is increasing your venous return. Thus, increases your cardiac output. Yep. And it also, as I talked about before, with the resistance because of all the vasoconstriction, there's essentially less space um, wherein the blood has to has to sit. So because there's less space but the same amount of blood, um, that will increase your resistance, um, which will increase your blood pressure. So there you have it. That is how blood pressure is controlled acutely in the situation of a decreased blood pressure. Um,
if your blood pressure is increased, I'll just talk about this very quickly, then you're going to have increased, you have decreased sympathetic and increased parasympathetic. Now the increased parasympathetic causes vessel dilation and also decreases your heart rate and decreases contractility. Okay, so that's it for the acute control of blood pressure. Um, so I'll talk about long-term control of blood pressure now, which um, is I guess a more effective but slow response and when it goes wrong or doesn't work in the way it should I guess um, it causes uh, a lot of hypertension which has its own damages. We talked about acute control now let's talk about long-term control of blood pressure. This is actually an issue to do with uh, not, not to do with the heart but it's actually very much a issue of this organ here. What are they? The kidneys. Alright, so the kidneys are actually um, mostly in control of long-term blood pressure and they do this by basically increasing peripheral resistance. And how do they do that? They do it mostly by increasing um, the amount of blood. They also affect vasoconstriction. Um, and they also have effect on the nervous system. Um, and now they do blow. Alright. So they do all these things. Um, how they do it? Well, how they do it? Well, when there is low. Okay, I'm going to do this as if I was in an exam. When there's low BP. That is, um, it prompts the juxtular glomerular cells in the kidney. That's right, JG cells. You can look it up. Juxtular glomerulus or JG cells in the kidney to secrete something called renin. Renin. What does renin do? Well, renin converts angiotensin ogen angiotensinogen angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 And angiotensin 1 converts to angiotensin 2. This is largely done in the lungs by X. Yeah, I had a bit of a um, technical issue over here. Um, so that's normally done there by X, so th which is what the uh, ACE inhibitors get rid of, um, or inhibit, I should say. So what does angiotensin 2 do? Well, it actually affects a lot of uh, receptors. It affects the adrenal gland. So Okay, so angiotensin um, acts at the adrenal gland. Prompting the adrenal gland to secrete aldosterone. Yep. Aldosterone 
Well, I won't go into the actual kidney function at the moment, but increased aldosterone will decrease urine output. So it does that, um, and it also acts on the kidney directly. In another way, um, to also well decrease urine output. So it also decreases your output. Well, I should actually say it makes the kidney decrease your output. Um, so then, where else does it work? Or where else are there receptors for it? I should say, um, it being a hormone. Um, there's also receptors in the brain. And what does that do? Oh, it stimulates first. Okay, so decrease urine output, increase first. Oh, what's this going to do? Increase blood volume. Alright, what else does it do? Oh, it also acts on the, what's the blood volume effect. Okay, well, I'm just going to use this pen for now. Um, so, it also acts on smooth muscle, arterial smooth muscle, ah, I worked it out, and what does it do there? It causes vasoconstriction. There we go, vasoconstriction. Now I'm getting a little bit messy here as I do. And this is how we are at NGP productions. We're not the most talented or organized. Vasoconstriction, uh, and that's at the arterial smooth muscle. And what else does it do? Hmm. It also works at the sympathetic nervous system and that increases nor adrenaline nor adrenaline um, and which I talked about earlier has lots of effects so uh, the sympathetic nervous system does noradrenaline, as I was just saying, um, which has lots of effects. Um, it causes vasoconstriction as well, and it also has um, increases cardiac contractility. To, oh, sorry, got distracted there. It also increases cardiac contractility, and also increases heart rate. So, yep. And blood volume, increased blood volume and increased vasoconstriction equals increased total peripheral resistance equals increased blood pressure. Um, it will also increase venous return. Which will increase stroke volume. which will, in turn, increase cardiac output, which in turn increases blood pressure. So you can see that all this increases blood pressure.